Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. We are going to put a bow on the series for the Pumpernickel. If you're not familiar, if you haven't seen the other parts, uh, this is the G-Force Arms GFP3N Pumpernickel. And it is somewhat of an 870 clone from G-Force Arms. Now, my question to you guys right off the bat is, what were you expecting from a Turkish imported shotgun? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. Realistically, I have been perfectly surprised by this, pleasantly surprised, I guess is the best way to say it, <laughs> about this shotgun because, um, to be frankly honest with you, I was not expecting it to live up to the abuse that we were putting through this. We put 510 shells without cleaning this shotgun as quickly as we possibly could, about 100 to 120 shells at a time, sometimes as low as 60, but nothing less than 60 each time that we took this out. Now, what I ended up doing um, since my last outing is went ahead and disassembled everything. And I wanted to show you guys some of the wear patterns that I'm seeing after 510 shells, uh, not only dirty, but also kind of cleaned up and wiped down as well. First and foremost, we see here on the magazine tube some wear from the forend, uh, which is what I was expecting from there. You can look at the bolt. Uh, the bolt looks pretty decent, dirty for sure, but pretty decent. Nothing that is really alarming when it comes to the different types of wear patterns that we're seeing as well. On the bolt carrier for the uh, forearm rails, there are a couple points where uh, there's a little bit more wear than I was expecting, but that is actually a very high wear point anyway because of all of the different contacts that you're seeing. In addition to that, we did run uh, a lot of really hot loads through this uh, shotgun and um, some loads that we probably shouldn't have. We'll talk about that here in just a second. The uh, barrel, barrel shroud uh, and bolt, they all looked pretty decent. Uh, once I was able to wipe everything down, get things cleaned up a little bit, you did see here on the magazine tube that uh, that wear that I was kind of concerned about actually cleaned up a lot better than I expected. So that's really, really good. Again, you can see on the bolt carrier that uh, those two wear points is a little bit more than what I was expecting, but I think that that's going to be uh, okay because I'm not seeing anything that is gouging or chipping away at that piece. The bolt as well looked pretty good, especially after being cleaned up. And uh, so did the internals of the receiver and uh, barrel hood. So I really do think that everything that we're seeing with this shotgun held up pretty decently. Now let's talk about some of the issues that I did have while testing the 500 plus shells. First and foremost, we had a couple shells that did not extract. Uh, that was in part four. And, um, you know, uh, that's not really too surprising since we didn't lubricate, we didn't clean anything from this. In addition to that, we also we saw some of uh, the action hanging up from time to time. And again, I believe that has to do with as Ooh. dirty as this thing had gotten. It was pretty filthy when I pulled it apart to wipe it down. So from there, I would expect with proper lubrication and good cleaning, you shouldn't expect any more of the uh, shells to hang up like, like, we, like we saw. So um, there, there is that. I'm pretty surprised at this shotgun once again. Now, let's talk about the different types of loads. Put a lot of low brass birdshot through it, and that's because it's cheap. Uh, we were looking for quantity, not quality, when it came to the ammunition that we were putting through it. But then again, we also put over, man, what? I put about 40 shells of the three inch Coyote Magnum loads through it, and uh, held it held up really, really good. Now. In part four, uh, or excuse me, in part five, I did discuss the slugs being shot through this. 
Again, this barrel is a fixed modified choke barrel and the manufacturer does not recommend slugs be shot through this. However, what I will say and some of the things that I did see from uh, commenters like uh, Alaskan Ballistics, I really do appreciate him. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, please do. He's got some really, really good information. Uh, a lot of chronograph testing like Paul Harrell does and puts a lot of data in his uh, video. So definitely check him out. But one of the points that he made was since I was shooting lead slugs through this, that those would conform to the barrel a little bit better and shouldn't be a problem for this. However, don't recommend it. Let me do it. And if it blows up in my face, then I'll take the hit on that. You guys don't want to do that. <laughs> but uh, again, um, I think there are a lot of other defensive loads that you could use for this. And if you wanted to, G-Force does allow you to swap out the barrel. They do have um, barrels that you can purchase uh, that will accept different types of chokes for this. So uh, keep that in mind as well. At the end of the day, again, extremely impressed by this shotgun. I'm very, very happy that uh, it survived, to be honest with you. Uh, I have personally met the guys from G-Force Arms when I was at SHOT Show, and they've got some really cool things coming here in the very near future. Uh, I hope to be able to work with them, but you guys know how I do things. I don't get paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent when it comes to uh, the reviews that I do. Uh, I tell you the good with the bad and try to leave it at that as much as possible. So um, let me know what you guys think. Would this shotgun be something that you would pick up for a truck gun or just something to sit in the corner of your bedroom or whatever the case may be? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. That's going to conclude it with this. Uh, I am going to do a series on the mini shells. We'll test it with this. We'll test it with a couple of other shotguns as well. But uh, as far as the pumpernickel goes, we're done with it. The next shotgun uh, that we're going to take a look at is going back to the Rock Island uh, All Gins 12. I guess the All Gins 12 gauge, I guess, <laughs> is what they call it. We're going to go ahead and go back to that and we're going to run the same thing. I don't remember how many shells I have through it. I think it's about a uh, hundred shells. So we're just going to jump back on board and run a few more hundred shells through it. Try to get it up to 500 and see what happens from there. Uh, should have a little bit more variety of things that we can do with that shotgun because um, it does have different chokes that you can put into the barrel. So with that being said, that's what you guys have to look forward to. And then we have other shotguns that we're gonna be looking at as we continue our Shotgun Sunday. In addition, I hope to be linking up with a friend of the channel to do some uh, training with shotguns because you guys have seen that my skills at handling uh, reloads and stuff like that has not been the best. So I'm excited about uh, getting some training on this platform and a few others as well. But that's really all we got this time. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thank you so very much for supporting the channel. If you guys have any comments, complaints, concerns, manifestos, anything that you want to talk about, put them down in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate it. As always, here comes a high five. Freedom through strength. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.